So you made the commitment and you served your country. You've defended freedom and you've seen the world. But career military is just not for you. Well, this video is right up your alley because today we're going to bring you 12 things that you should do before you're one and done. Happy day, folks, and especially a happy Mother's Day to all the babies' mamas out there. Today's episode of The Road Program is especially dedicated to my favorite baby's mama, Lindsay. So you've decided to transition over to civilian life. There's no shame in that. You're part of an exclusive club. Less than 1% of the population of the United States has ever sworn the oath and put on the uniform. Don't let anybody give you shit for making the decision that's best for your life. As long as you got that honorable discharge, then you've done your part. And the day after you get your DD-214, your branch of service isn't burning to the ground. It's going to continue trucking on just like it always has. Alright guys, so the approach I took in putting together this list was pretending that I was going to have a conversation with younger Eddie and taking my last 19 years of experience and putting together a list if I knew that Eddie was going to join the military, do one tour, and transition out to civilian life. If you're in the military, one day you're getting out. If you enjoy the content on this channel, please consider hitting that like button. And I would ask you to sight in and double tap that subscribe, but what would happen is you would subscribe and unsubscribe. So let's just hit the button once. Without further ado, here's our top 12 things you should do before you're one and done. Number one, approach the job like you're gonna be a lifer. I know that sounds like a pretty lame answer, but there's plenty of reasons why you should do this. Let's keep in mind, this is probably your first major job out of high school or college. Now's the time to establish things like your mentality and your habits that'll lead you to be successful down the road. You need to train yourself to succeed no matter what you're doing. Plus, you might end up staying. You might end up liking it, or it could be the best choice for you moving forward. I remember my dad constantly reminding me that ROTC could pay for college. And I used to tell him, sorry pops, no offense, but I will never join the military. I'm just too anti-authority. Little did I know I was going to end up in Pensacola, Florida at Officer Candidate School. Well, that was 20 years ago. And now I'm putting together YouTube videos for the military community and I'm about to retire. I guess my long-winded point is, you never know where you're going to end up. So whatever you're doing, while you're doing it, do the best that you can. The next few items are going to address your financial health. So in order to tackle our list, you're going to have to be good at number two. And number two is establishing a budget. Blech. I know, but you need to keep track of how much money is coming in and more importantly, how much money is going out. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying don't go out with your friends. That's a huge part of the military experience. You meet people from all over the world, you go out in exotic lands and you have the time of your life. You're making memories that'll last forever. You should know what your spending limits are. Having fun should never put you in a financial hole. How much money do you spend a month on food, clothing, your car payment? Are you saving up for something like a laptop or gaming console? Be proactive in managing your money. And please, don't get yourself an expensive car or a lemon off the lot right outside a base. Right now, a vehicle is just transportation. It shouldn't turn into a money pit. Number three, build up a savings fund and an emergency fund. Yeah, I know that sounds boring as hell, but guys, it's time to start adulting. And I understand, it's much tougher for an E2 with less than two years in, straight out of basic, making $1,900 a month. But the military really gives you a chance to build it up. I mean, think about it. Your housing is free, your meals are cheap. By the time that you get out, you should have saved up enough to sustain you for three to six months. Number four, build up your credit score. You may not care what your credit score is now, but that credit score is gonna play a lot into what kind of loans you can get and what rate you'll get on those loans in the future. Wanna buy a house? What's your credit score? Your credit score is also affecting the premium that you're paying on insurance. Trying to move into a new place? That landlord, all things being equal, is probably gonna pick the potential tenant that has the best credit score because he knows that you're good for it. If you don't have one, get a credit card. But you gotta be very careful with a credit card. Don't spend any more than you would if you had cash on hand. And make sure that you pay your balance on time 
every time. A credit card can be a great tool when you're trying to build up your credit, but it also can put you in a huge hole if you're using it irresponsibly. Luckily, there are a lot of credit cards out there with no annual fees, and many of the credit cards that do have annual fees are willing to waive those fees for military service members. You just need to make sure that you're doing research and getting a credit card with a company that's reputable. There are also a lot of perks that can come with credit cards. Maybe I'll cover those perks in a future video. Also, you want to keep your longest running bank accounts and credit cards open. You want to pay all your bills, like your phone bill, on time. And you don't want to apply for too many new credit cards at once. Make sure that you get a copy of your credit report and dispute any inaccuracies that are in the report. Number five, invest. Mutual funds, stocks, real estate, your retirement plan, they're all great ways for you to get your money making money. It really is important to get your money making money for you sooner rather than later. Here's a link from my previous video about the market, TSP, and BRS. Please pay special attention to the compounding interest section. Now's the time for you to start investing. And speaking of having your money make money for you in your retirement plan, let's talk about number six, the blended retirement system. The blended retirement system is the military's retirement plan for you. The blended retirement system is especially powerful because you don't have to do 20 years to see the benefits. You do need to do that minimum two-year service so that your money is vested, meaning that that government match for your contribution up to 5% annually is money in your pocket. For number seven, we're moving off financials, but we're still talking about value. How valuable are you to a company or school? Do everything you can to build yourself up so that you're bringing more to the table. Take advantage of college tuition assistance programs. Get yourself as much education as you can. Get certificates. Get specialized training. You want a specialty or school? Work with your chain of command to get a seat in that class. Look for anything in or out of the military that's going to build up your resume. Number eight, keep a current resume. As you go from position to position or you get more responsibilities added, make sure you're keeping that resume up to date. That resume shouldn't be in military speak. You need to convert it into civilian speak so that 99% of the population who's never served in the military understands what you're doing. There are plenty of resources and websites that'll help you convert all the good things that you've done into the military into something that civilians can understand and understand your value. Number nine, make sure that you're seeing medical. The military is trained and bred us to push through, to fight through adversity, and to get the job done. It's only recently starting to understand or stress the importance of self-care. Now don't be a malingerer, but if things are bothering you, make sure you're going into medical and getting yourself treated and that medical condition documented. Proper documentation is gonna make your claim go much smoother when it's time to file with the Department of Veterans Affairs. I'm gonna go pretty in depth in the future on VA claims in future videos. But I guess for now, the bottom line is, you wanna have proper documentation from your jacked up back from riding in the back of a Humvee, or your messed up knees from going up and down ladder wells. Number 10, map out your career so you know what your end goal is. If you wanna be a computer programmer on the outside, try to sign up for an MOS or rate. It's gonna help you build up those skills and learn your field while you're in the military. And while you're in the military, make sure you're doing everything you can to build yourself up. Make sure that you really understand the GI Bill and the benefits of the GI Bill. Did you know that if you serve 90 days in the military, you're eligible for 50% of the benefits of the GI Bill? Education is one of the biggest reasons that folks enlist in the armed forces. It's a great benefit, but you've earned it. If your intent is to one day pass your GI Bill to your children or to your spouse, you have to make sure that you're educated on the service requirements. And finally, number 12, get letters of recommendation. If you've been approaching the job like a lifer and putting in good work, it should be easy for your commanding officer or somebody in your chain of command to write you a good letter of recommendation. These letters can be specific or general for any job or school. Make sure that you talk to whoever's writing the letter well in advance. Give them a brag sheet, or better yet, draft a letter for them that really focuses on the things that are important for your application. If you need the letter by a certain date, make sure the person writing the letter knows that time. 
back that data up a couple of days so that you have a chance to review for typos and make sure the letter meets all the needs that you have for your application. I've written countless letters over the last 19 years for job applications, college applications, writing letters to the courts. A good letter of recommendation could be the tiebreaker between you and somebody else for a coveted position. So there you have it guys, 12 things that you should do before you're one and done. As always, thank you for supporting the channel, and if you would, please hit that like and subscribe. Out here. <clears throat>